Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Uh, today we'd like to talk about diagrams. So diagrams and category theory, kind of the main players. Secretly, I also want to talk about commuting diagrams to see what that means. So kind of the story is that most diagrams are actually not commutative, but most diagrams you write down are commutative. So be a bit careful, right? So I will try to explain uh, what a diagram is concretely and abstractly, because that's what you usually do in category theory, right? You have a concrete picture in your head, but actually would like to formulate it as abstract as possible because you want to apply it to very different situations. So kind of the most um, abstract version of a diagram will be a graph. And there will be a functor involved, but I don't want to write down a functor right now because I haven't talked about functor yet. Um, but in general, if you already know what a functor is, uh, everything will be a functor you will see. Uh, kind of functors are the main players of category theory in the end, anyway, in some sense at least. Uh, so here's an example. Of course, you should always start with something like sets um, or vector spaces, but let's start with sets. So diagrams and sets. What is a diagram and set? Well, I associate, uh, think of a graph, I associate a set to each vertex and I draw some edges between them, whatever, like this triangle here. Uh, I could be more sophisticated. I could draw an edge here and an edge here and an edge uh, here, and I could add another one, whatever, some kind of any graph you, what is an X set A, so X, Y, Z, A. Uh, so kind of any kind of graph you can imagine. Um, your vertices are sets and arrows are certain maps between sets. So here's an example. So here my set is very boring. and just, uh, well, very interesting, of course, in some sense, uh, the integers. Maybe even the most interesting set ever. Maybe the natural numbers is the most interesting set ever. Um, I let you decide what's your what's your favorite set. But anyway, um, so I have sets for my vertices. I have three of them, one, two, three, and I have three edges. And my edges are labeled by the arrows in my category, so by morphisms, uh, so by maps in this case. So I could, for example, have the map the times five map, uh, the times minus two map, and the times minus ten map here. Or I could have the times five map, the times minus 10 map, and the times minus two map. Both of these are diagrams for the same underlying graph. And the underlying graph is this triangle type thing, right? So both of these are kind of incarnations of this graph. And the difference between the terminology is that for the first one, there's just one pass you could take here. Um, it's this pass. So I call it going right and down, right and down. And there's another pass you can take is this one going right down um, and they equal. So they give the same map. So times minus 10 is the same as times five and times minus two. So we will say that diagram one is commutative because why? Well, that's the terminology for whatever kind of pass you take uh, with the same start and end points. Of course, they will be the same arrow in the end. They will be the same map. Uh, with contrast, two is non-commutative. So let's see times five, this is times five, times minus 10 uh, is certainly not equal to uh, times minus two. So this is not commutative, but you can still draw the diagram if you want, right? The difference here is um, you can always draw a diagram for a graph, but whether it commutes, that kind of depends on the choice of your uh, maps associated, to, of course, also on the choice of your sets associated to the vertices and the maps associated to the edges. Um, so here in this case, as I said, one is not, it is commutative because, well, the, the, the two ways of running around the triangle, there are only two, they give the same result. And the second one is not commutative because both, again, you check those two ways and they don't give the same result. And kind of the strength of category theory is that this should work kind of in any category without reference to maps at all. So in my other favorite example, one cop, Remember, this was this uh, category where I just have a certain number of natural numbers at the bottom and top, and I just connect them as I want. Um, this was a bad example, so let's just do it this way. Uh, so we just connect them as I want, and the composition is given by, by stacking another one on top, something like this, uh, and then kind of rescale. So this is then now, this is two, this is four, this is four. The first one was a map from four to four. The second one was a map from or an arrow actually from four to two. And so the composition is an arrow from four to two, uh, as you can see. And that's kind of this kind of, uh, it, it looks like this, the composition in this case, uh, by just straightening them a bit out. 
Anyway, you can imagine the same in any category. So I still have my triangle graph and I can associate again two models to the triangle graph, which now are very far away from sets and uh, maps. They just live in this category. So what do I do? I associate to every vertex of my graph. It's exactly the same story as before. I now associate an object in my category. And I told you, I just told you that an object in this category are just natural numbers, the number of endpoints. And to each uh, edge, I associate a certain morphism, something like this, for example. Or I could do this guy, right, for example, it's kind of the same, the same thing. I note there's a difference here, so those two diagrams are not quite the same, right? So this is really two different incarnations of the same graph in a completely different category, right? Same graph, and I showed you four different incarnations. So here are two, and here another two, uh, in two different categories. But the graph can live in a lot of in a lot of things. Just think of a graph as an abstract object, and you could realize it as a diagram in your favorite category by associated say associating objects to vertices and arrows to arrows. That's kind of the point. And it's still the same terminology. So one commutes, uh, two does not commute. So let's see if you stack those two together. So maybe you want to pause the video and, and just do this. So if you, well, or let me just do it. You stack this here on top, which looks a little bit like this. And you will see that this actually is this diagram by straightening it out a little bit. If you would do the same here, I mean, you can maybe already see it. So let me just do it. Uh, so if you stack it here, um, this is not the same diagram. Those are not equal. So again, this idea of just comparing all paths uh, works in case one and does not work in case two. But now it's very, very far away from checking maps. It's just checking those funny diagrams, which is kind of a completely different flavor. And they all fit in the same story, which is so, this is so amazing about category theory, right? Anyway, um, so let me just, so a, a graph is just a graph, right? So here's a directed graph. It should be a directed graph. I will always say graph, but actually it's a directed graph. So just an abstract entity, I call it the graph. It's kind of an abstract diagram if you want. So here's an example of an abstract diagram. This lives nowhere. It's just a nowhere, basically. Nowhere. It just lives nowhere. Um, and it's just a graph. And we can interpret this graph that I call J in any category. This is kind of a model. So I can just think of it, just assigning it to something which will look very similar. Um, so this is just this type of thing here. Uh, but now every vertex, whatever is set, for example, or is one of those numbers and every edge is a map times five or whatever. And every edge is some funny picture. Uh, this was there, whatever, kind of funny picture type thing uh, or whatever kind of category you have, right? Very amenable to basically all everything you want. And you say it commutes if all paths in this graph spit out the same uh, result after interpreting it in some category, right? So the, the property of being commutative has nothing to do with the graph. It's only in the interpretation. You can't see whether something commutes by just looking at the graph. You can only see it in the interpretation. Um, and the interpretation will happen in some category, right? So I can't see uh, those two graphs. Uh, this graph gives me those two diagrams. And I just can't see on the graph. Uh, so I should maybe should add uh, vertices, uh, sorry, and uh, orientations to the edges. I can't see just by looking at the graph whether it is commutative or not because I first need to interpret it somewhere. And this is where the notion of commutativity comes from. So all paths that start and end at the same point need to give the same result. So for example, this path needs to be the same as this path in order to be commutative in a, mo in a model in, and when you interpret it in some category. Similarly, this path needs to be this pass and this pass and so on. So here in this example, there are quite a few paths that you would need to check um, whether they commute. And that's then the definition. So the abstract definition of a diagram is as follows. A diagram, I call it D of shape J. So J was my, is my graph. In C, that's my interpretation. So C is just um, a subcategory, is some functor which associates to a graph uh, something in the category, which means for each object, you, uh, for each vertex, you place an object of your category. For each edge, you place an arrow of your category. We like to think about sets, and for each object, you place a set, and for each arrow, you place a, a map. But it doesn't need to be 
as uh, it was kind of, I hope, very obvious in this case where there's just, just no notion of map anyway, right? So it doesn't need to be a map. If you like to think about maps, that's fine. Um, and you say commutes, if all directed paths that start and end at the same endpoints lead to the same result in C, again, this is happening in the interpretation, right? It doesn't, it, it's not, it doesn't depend on, on J, it really depends on your interpretation. So how you should read it is D is my interpretation, J is my shape, and C is where I want to interpret things in. That kind of the point is one shape, many diagrams. We had seen this guy, just one diagram, and it had, for example, two incarnations are here in completely different categories, one of them in sets, and one of them in this cobaltism type category, one cop. And if you know what a functor is, then I should replace this word association, which is a bit vague right now, by it's a functor from a certain nice category, um, whatever. And actually, how you want to think about J, J is actually also a category. Each graph and some kind of you can interpret a graph as a category, but actually it's largely irrelevant about how you think of it as a category. It's just kind of a blueprint um, where you want to associate uh, objects to vertices and, and maps to edges, arrows to edges. I should say arrows, I shouldn't say maps. Never say maps really, really bad if you want to do category theory, right? So um, of course, it's totally fine to think about maps, but it's somehow more general. And kind of the point is you might think now, okay, I have a huge graph. It has a lot of paths. There's a lot of things to check. Uh, very often it draws, but you, you strictly speaking, really need to check all possibilities, but it usually boils down to something much smaller. So here's an example. Uh, very often it boils down to what people call Faces commute, commuting faces. So here, I would need to check that the outer triangle commutes. So in my notation, this is F here, H here, and J here. So I would need to check that F is equal to HJ. And remember that I, I, and I usually never write the symbol here. So HJ is just HJ. And again, also remember this funny really convention from well, funny depends on where you come from anyway. So the really convention from right to left. So that's what I need to check. I would need to check that in a certain category, right? So wherever I am, I would need to check whether this holds or not. It's part of the datum of checking, but that is a commutative diagram. But it actually checks from, uh, it also actually follows from uh, smaller triangles, if you want. Um, so by just by faces commute. So if I know that this face commutes, it knows that this face commutes, and if I know that this face commutes, which means, for example, that uh, Ki for the bottom one is equal to J, and then you can just piece everything together and you get this one. So Ki equals J, that's this guy here. Um, so let me do the next one. Uh, so what do we have here? H equals, uh, uh, sorry, H, uh, Kh equals G. So this is this one here. And the last one is something like F equals uh, GI, and if you piece those three together, so this one, so this one, and this one, they actually do give you uh, the required result. So I just did it here in formulas, just piece it together and then just replace it with a simple algebra and you will see that it works. So actually, you usually don't need to check that many paths. So kind of a smaller set of paths usually suffices to check, but still it might be depending on your diagram, there might be quite a lot to show. And kind of the most famous or the most popular ones you see are the ones where they are got kind of two paths. Uh, this is a triangle diagram. There are just two paths to compare. Uh, also very popular is a square diagram where there are also again, two paths to compare. Um, so these are usually popular ones, but in principle you can do it for any graph. Okay, so what is a diagram? A diagram is just a graph together with an interpretation in some category. That's how I would like to think about it. Um, you might, if you want, as I said, you can think of it as having uh, some sets at vertices and some maps between uh, the vertices at the edges, but you don't need to. That's kind of the power of category theory. It's just an abstract object, a graph, together with a functor that I call D, which associates a certain interpretation to the vertices and the edges. And in the end, diagrams and computing diagrams. So, so commutativity was this uh, all paths gives the same result, um, basically. Um, so those are very important notions in category theory. Again, made abstract using graphs. So categories are very, very close to graphs. It's kind of, kind of a more fancy structure than a graph, but it's, it's 
basically kind of a graph with some additional data. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.